welcome to my Killing Floor 2 map tier list. Of course, this is going to be extremely subjective, where you may completely disagree with some of my takes, which is totally fine. I don't exactly know what the general community thinks of all the maps. This is just how I personally felt after playing around a little over 2,000 hours or so into this game as of recording, so my opinions could change over time. Given that this game is pretty close to the end of its life cycle, this, the last map just recently got added, and Killing Floor 3 has been announced, so it felt like a good time to make a video like this. To be upfront here, I honestly think most of the maps in this game kind of sucks. A lot of them are fun the first time around, but after that, the new factor kind of wears off. A lot of them I don't play, so you're going to be getting a lot of like negativity and heavy takes in this video. Okay, so I'll be going from the bottom of the list, which is D tier, all the way to S tier. I'll try my best to fully explain why certain maps are so low and why some maps are so high up on the list. So from worst to best, D tier, these are maps that I'd rather not play. I might even leave if we play them. Honestly, there's very little to like about these maps in my eyes. So then we first have Dissector. This map is boring, basic. You can only play it for Endless, which I don't really like Endless anyways. After the novelty kind of wears off, I never play Endless unless I want to level something up or if it's like required for a seasonal. But I already have everything leveled up, so I never play this map like ever. That's probably why it's the worst map. It's just very, very generic and basic. Next up, we have Santa's Workshop. Objective mode on paper is cool, but after the first time playing it, that kind of novelty wears off and I just, it's just not fun. I never ever play it again. Probably the biggest issue is the Zed Spawns especially if you're super slow during certain sections. If this map was converted into like a survival map, like how the endless mode is, maybe you can go into C tier, but um, I do like the snow aspect of it, but that's, that's the only good thing about it. Otherwise, I'd never play this ever. Nightmare. Holdout style maps in general are probably my least favorite type of maps besides objective. So this is, in my opinion, the worst holdout style map. Most of the locations in this map are not super interesting and they're super tiny. I guess it's fun for a challenge, but if I actually want a challenge, I'm just going to play Power Core or Biolapse. Uh, those are both holdout maps too, but at least they have some kind of interesting aspects to it. Shopping Spree. You might be wondering why this is so low on the list. It's not necessary a badly designed map. It's just extremely boring and anytime I play I just feel like the Z spawns are super slow. Usually the camping spot up top makes it even slower because then they all kind of funnel in through one door which is super boring and then there's the the elevator music that plays in the background that kind of just you know puts me to sleep. This is a very sleepy map overall. Prison. This is a cool map visually but it's very boring because everyone kind of camps the watchtower area and I really hate that spot. Usually there's a demo fire bug or even a berserker that camps there and then just becomes a snooze fest. I do not like Zerk walls. That's like that's like a uh, tactic that you can do. And I don't like spam fest in general. And I feel like that spot particular kind of harvest that mentality. So I guess if you're camping somewhere else, which I almost never ever see, then maybe it could be good, but yeah, this, I really hate that camping spot. That's why it's so low. And then the last of the D tier is Moonbase. I like the idea of this map, but the map layout is just okay. It's kind of big. And my main reason for putting it so low is a low gravity. I hate low gravity. It's really fun at first, but the more you play it, the more of an annoyance it kind of becomes. Because I, you know, I like to play precision based perks. Low gravity and precision based perks does not work too well. And I find that usually when I play this, everyone is just scattered around the map, kind of just jumping. Yeah, that's not very fun. It doesn't really suit my play style so when this map usually gets chosen i usually just leave <laughs> it's uh it's not a map for me okay now on to c tier these are maps that i mostly play for the variety of it maybe on very rare occasions i play them they're not necessarily good maps but they are maps i'm okay with playing once you know maybe like once a month or once every so often i'm okay with them these maps are not something i would consider bad maps they're just very mediocre below average maps that maybe once every so often i'll play them so then we have the descent i maybe play this map like once a year it's, it's super tiny it's not very fun not that interesting it's borderline tier for me but there is some fun to be had purely because of how, how much of a challenge it can be but that's the only really comment that i can say about it biolabs same thing can be pretty much said about this map i think the one thing that puts biolabs above the descent is i think the layout is a lot more open and i think the layout's a lot more interesting and fun compared to the, the descent so yeah if, if i want to challenge this might be the map that i choose then we have power core 
This is probably the third best holdout map. Really like the factory aesthetic of this one. It kind of reminds me of that map from Killing Floor 1. Forgot the name of it, but kind of reminds me of Black Mesa from Half-Life 1 with, with its aesthetic. And it's also one of the hardest maps in the entire game. I'll probably say it is the hardest map in the entire game. So I really like it for the challenge aspect and I like how it looks, but it's still a holdout map and it gets boring pretty fast. So I only play it once every so often. If it wasn't a holdout style map, this could probably be an A tier map. Catacombs, this is fun once in a blue moon. It mostly suffers from the layout being kind of maze-like. As the waves progress, the maps get progressively darker, which can make it kind of annoying to play. I mean, this could be an upside because there's actually use for night vision now. This and Farmhouse are the only maps you really need night vision for, but it's just not that fun too much. The layout, I really don't like. I think the map looks cool, but the layout is the biggest issue with this, and I also don't think it works too well for gunslingers or sharpshooters. I'm Usually if you camp the staircase area, usually it kind of favors demolitionists or firebugs, supports I guess. It's just a very okay map. Sanitarium, visually a cool map. I love the Cthulhu theme. I think the layout of this map sucks. <laughs> I hate the camping spot. Everyone loves to camp that giant staircase at the entrance. Staircase camping spots kind of goes against precision based perks. There is another camping spot on this map which is underground that can make it fairly fun. It's hard to actually get people to go there in public games so yeah this is it's better than catacombs because at least the layout isn't as confusing but i just really do not enjoy the camping spot on this map then we have one of the newer maps subduction this is the second biggest map in the game it's a little generic i wish we could have seen more of the ocean like if it had more windows where we could actually see the ocean it would have been a lot more visually interesting otherwise it feels kind of like a generic biotic slab type facility which we already have like three of those yeah biggest issue with this map is probably its size and how generic it looks and there's only really one good camping spot which is a theater but it can be fun on the occasion castle bolter this is the final map added to killing floor 2 it's still pretty fresh in my mind so i'm still not entirely sure how i feel about it it's also going to be getting a post update to fix performance this is by far the lar largest map in killing floor 2 which you know i thought was kind of cool at first but i feel like it goes against it because there's nothing super interesting about it unlike you know like monster ball or volter manor it does neither of the indoor or the outdoor sections all too well it just feels like a mediocre community made map that was kind of thrown together then you know an actual official one doesn't feel like that last big bang of a map that i was hoping it would have been the lighting feels kind of flat and dark in some of the areas and it can feel kind of like a maze on the right side of the castle yeah just kind of a disappointing map overall farmhouse this is the only map that i would consider kind of scary it's fun every so often. I hate camping in the barn. That becomes a spam fest, which isn't for me. I prefer to either be upstairs in the house or outside roaming. Farmhouse does have potential. It's too small. It would have benefited from being a bit larger. And if it was a bit brighter, like if they threw around like glow sticks scattered around the map outside, it could have been a bit more playable and you could actually see things more and made it more interesting. Otherwise, it's too small and way too dark. Dystopia 2029, visually a cool map. I wish the indoor sections weren't so generic looking. I like the, the hotel area is one of the camping spots. It's very generic looking not very interesting the outside area is very cool all the buildings and stuff cyberpunk aesthetic is really cool i wish there was a bit more structure to it it just feels kind of big open and most of it doesn't really get utilized and they, the zeds kind of just come from all directions anytime you're outside the camping spots aren't very fun on this map the visual aspect is the only reason i would really play on this map carolyn hamlet it's very cozy i like how it looks the camping spot makes this a boring spam fest and they only spawn directly in front of you so yeah it's really just how the Zed spawn is probably the biggest downfall to them to this map and it's probably why I very rarely play it. It also really doesn't seem Christmas themed either so it's kind of a missed opportunity to you know have more snow. You know, snow is a uh, snow is a very important thing. I'm gonna say this a lot but snow is one of those things that I think makes the gore stand out more and it makes makes the progression of the map get more bloody which I think is really cool visually. I don't know why it doesn't have snow on the map considering it's Christmas themed. Black Forest is a day night cycle which is kind of cool but it kind Kind of lacks distinct locations in it so it feels kind of just like generic forest with nothing interesting going on it and the zed spawns are a little bit slow at times if it had like more going on with it and the zed spawned a bit faster then i would play it more often nether hole this can be fun every so often it feels a bit too small a bit too claustrophobic if it was a bit bigger and more open then i think this map would, would probably be a b tier i do like the aesthetic of it i just think it's way too tiny for what it is and yeah it could have been a bit more interesting
Tyrus. And then the last C tier, which is Elysium, one of the better holdout style maps. It's actually a holdout style map that feels more open, but it also feels extremely generic and flat in the main holdout sections. I know a lot of people like Elysium, but to me, it's just the levels are kind of inconsistent with it. Some of the areas are kind of nice. Some of the other areas are very generic looking like there's this like matrix area which is super hard and not very fun at all to play on and then there's this other section where just the entire ground is completely missing which you know that's probably one of the worst levels in the game i don't know what's going on with that this map is very hit or miss to me it can be fun sometimes but other times i think some of the other areas just kind of suck on it so maybe once every so often i like this map and then we're on to b tier these are maps that i would consider to be good will be fine playing with every so often. They're not necessarily amazing maps, but their maps will play a lot more regularly. The lowest B tier I would consider to be Containment Station. This is like just barely making making it into B tier. The layout of this map is pretty good and it's very easy. Visually, this map is incredibly generic and it's a little too easy for my liking because it's kind of just long, flat hallways with nothing super interesting going on with it. But I do like the layout of it and it's always an option you can choose if you would just want something easy to play with. It's also also very fun for gunslinger and sharpshooters just a very bottom of the barrel good just barely making it into b tier steam fortress cool map most of it doesn't ever really get used though there are two decent hold spots on this map the only real issue is most of the map never really gets used and the Z spawns can feel a little bit slow just a tiny bit slow on here i prefer airship over steam fortress but this is still a very solid map overall tragic kingdom this is a fun map visually. I like the lighting, the colorful lighting. The like hillbilly theme park aesthetic is really cool. Only issue I can really think of is camping the roller coaster is super boring. And I know a lot of people like that spot. If I'm gonna play this map, I prefer camping in like that merry-go-around. The Zeds do kind of spawn everywhere, which can be an issue, but it is a pretty decent map. Krampus Lair, this is one of the best holdout style maps. I love the snow aspect of it. The first two sections of this map is amazing. The second half of this map kind of sucks. The further you go underground, the more claustrophobic it gets, and it eventually it just becomes a spam fest by the end of it. It would have been an amazing map if it wasn't a holdout, or if it was just, if it wasn't for the second half going underground, and if it just stayed on the surface, I think it would have been pretty amazing. Yeah, I feel like it's probably so high up, because I just love the first two sections, and I love the snow aspect of it. It's just a very good Christmas-themed map. Folter Manor, this is a pretty solid map. Most of it feels well thought out. I like the layout of it. The underground section kind of sucks, though. Not much really else to say about this map other than I enjoy playing this every so often. Very middle of the road, average, decent map. Zed Landing, visually stunning, has a great layout. The only downside I can think of this map is that Zed spawns can be super slow at times, but otherwise I think Visually, it's very cool, and I do enjoy playing on this map. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty decent map. Hellmark Station. This is a great map. I love the lighting to this and the location. I like the camping spot right by the coffee station. If you know what I'm talking about, I should show some uh, visuals here. Yeah, the only downside I can think is the patriarch's voice can be kind of annoying because he likes to nag you and kind of put you down. But yeah, it, it's a decent map. I do think it's good, but it's not necessarily amazing. Airship. This is the better of the two, in my opinion, compared to Steam Fortress. I love the layout of this map it can be a pretty good challenge during the later wave the only downside of this map is the annoying voice of the of the guy who talks who says the cringy dialogue over and over i wish it was just the regular trader's voice but you know you can't have everything do enjoy this map maybe it could be a tiny bit bigger but otherwise this is a very good map ashwood asylum this is a very well designed large map even though most people kind of camp this tiny area it's fun it runs really well yeah this is just a very very good map i could see if someone putting this up here into a tier but it's it's just because most of the map never really gets used, so that's why I don't put it higher up on the list. Also really love the aesthetic of being in the insane asylum. I think it's really cool. Rig, I love the rain and the location of being on this. In the middle of the ocean on this rig is pretty cool. It's a decent sized map. It's really good for cutting. It has really good hold spots. I do enjoy playing this one quite a bit. I, I do wish the performance on this map was a little bit better though. Also, I think the lighting could be a little bit better because sometimes it looks a little bit flat in some areas, but a very good map. Hostile ground. This is pretty much burning paris 2 essentially except it's a lot more flat it's nowhere near as good it feels a little bit generic it's still a very fun map to play overall i would just recommend never going underground just just camp the streets up top it's a pretty good experience infernal realm this is the doom-esque map i love the aesthetic to this i like the layout there's multiple camping spots which is nice although I, it is a little bit too flat for my liking so 
yeah, that's why I don't put it higher up on the list. Lockdown, this has an amazing layout. There's multiple hold spots on either side of the map. That's kind of a rare thing to find in, in this game. The layout is definitely the strongest suit about it. The only real downside, I think, is visually it's extremely generic. Like if there was windows to the map, we could like actually see outside the space. If you could see space more, it would have been really cool looking. Otherwise, it kind of just feels like a biotics lab kind of asset flip. Thing. Yeah, that's like the biggest issue with this map. Then the very last of the B tier evacuation point. Some might call this super average, but I would say it feels like a classic map. It has a very good layout with multiple good holding locations. So it feels fresh every time you play it. The Z spawns feel a little bit slow at times and visually could have a little bit more going on to it, but still a very fun map. It's almost A tier for me. So this is when things actually get more interesting. So A tier, these are maps that are considered to be great and I do enjoy playing them pretty very First map we have here is Biotics Lab. I would consider this a classic map. It has a fun holdout spot with a lane above and a lane below. It's a decent kiting route. It can also be pretty challenging at the later waves. Biggest issue, I think visually it's a little bit generic. It's not really the map's fault. It's kind of more because there's so many clones of Biotics Lab. Like, you know, Biolapse, um, Lockdown, Containment Station all kind of feel the same visually. So that's his biggest issue. So I just want to put this in here. I do think Biotics Lab, I miss the grunge aesthetic from Killing Floor 1. This is more like a futuristic laboratory vibe to it, which isn't as interesting, but I do think the layout of this map is one of its best strong suits. Brown Witch Town. I absolutely love the visual aspect of this map. I like the architecture of the buildings. The layout is pretty good. There's multiple camping spots and it can be a decent challenge as well. The only real issue I can think is there's a certain holdout spot on this map that can make it super boring and make it a spam fest. If you're camping at the other locations, this is a pretty good map, pretty great map. But yeah, I think the main reason I have this so high up on the list is I just really love the aesthetic, the Halloween kind of, you know, spooky European building aesthetic, which I think is really cool. Then we have Crash. This is a very well made map. It's very simplistic. I like the Christmas theme of this map. I love the snow. <laughs> it's kind of like what I wish Carolyn Hamlet was like. There's two really good hold spots on this map and overall it's very enjoyable. The only issue with this map, I feel like it's kind of Visually, it looks very washed out, like it has this white haze to everything, which can make it look a little bit boring. Then we have Nuked. Nuked is an excellent classic map that will always be fun to play. Visually stunning and eerie. I love how you can hear like the nukes going off in the background, how the map kind of gets more orange over time. The layout is kind of just this big giant circle, so it's really good for kiting, and then there's a really good hold spot on it as well. It's always a good time in Nuke. Only bad thing I can say is maybe it's a little bit too easy if you have the right team, but yeah, a very great map. And then last of the A tier is Desolation. This is kind of like Outpost, but without the snow. Multiple good hold spots. There's the helicopter spot, and then there's one at the spawn area, and then there's two good hold spots underground. I love the aesthetic of this, and I love the helicopter location. Just a very well-made map overall. I know there's people who actually prefer the original one, but I think the changes that Tripwire made to this are actually pretty good. The original one was just too flat and easy, and I really like the changes they made to this. It's just a very, very great map. S tier. These are the best maps in the game, in my opinion. So first one we have here is Spillway. This has a very good layout. I love how it looks. I like how it's daytime. You can see everything as kind of a rare thing in this game. Most maps are either cloudy or nighttime. So having a map where it's just like daytime like this is really nice. The layout is probably one of the best layouts in Killing Floor 2. So the only downside is it can be a little bit of a snooze fest if you have a very good team. But other than that, I think this is a very good map. It's kind of the map I choose if I want something to just chill on or test things or it's just like a no brainer option where you can always have fun on. I mean, I've heard people call this chill way. <laughs> it's very easy and it's very fun and chill, but it's not like a boring easy. It's not like shopping spree where it's really boring and the Z spawns are slow. The Z spawns are decent on spillway. It's just the layout is very easy and it's always a good time on, on spillway. Then next up we have monster ball. This, I used to think this wasn't all too special, but the more I play this map, the more I really appreciate it. I love the Halloween spooky aesthetic it has going for it. I like how it kind of the color scheme changes during the later waves. The atmosphere and the visuals are really cool. I like how colorful it is with all the with all the flares scattered around the map. And I like the dance floor with all the lights and everything. It's just very a very cool map. I also like the balloons. I think that's fun to shoot. Just, you know, balloons. <laughs> 
Balloons are cool. It doesn't have too many spots to hold, really. There's maybe two good spots to hold on it. The dance floor is the main spot you want to be. The only negative I can say is the dance floor can get kind of annoying as the music kind of repeats on loop can get kind of annoying fast. So sometimes I just like to disable the music whenever I play this. But yeah, uh, also haunts can be a little bit cringe, but you know, that's can't really do much about that. But yeah, a very, very good map. Then we have the second best map in the game, Burning Paris. This is an absolute classic map. One of the very first maps ever added to killing floor 2 in my opinion there's almost nothing wrong with this map besides maybe the underground section be kind of pointless to go to this is usually the map i think of when i think of killing floor 2 it's kind of like the west london of care cave one for killing floor 2 so yeah, it's always a fun time here and i like the openness of the map well, i also really appreciate how there's two choke points on either side of the map it can make it really interesting when you have to kite and yeah just a really good map to both hold on and to kite on and yeah just a very very good map this is my my personal favorite outpost in my opinion this is the best map in the game i love the snow in this map i think snow is something that's kind of underutilized in this game i like that i think visually it's beautiful i think the camping spot is really fun I like how there's multiple lanes you have like a side section for commando or someone else and then you have the other sections with a door and then like the medic can camp in in the middle there and has pretty good view between both sides it's not a super easy map but it's not a hard map either it's like this in between i just think it's a very well made map there also might be a little bit of bias to me this is like the map i think of when i think of the early days of kf2 this was the very first map i ever played and this was the, the map in the beta that i used to play a lot of nostalgia to this map and i think it's very well designed i wish there were more hold spots on the map because it's kind of one area you stay on the rest of the map is kind of for kiting if it had more holds it would be the perfect map this is by no means a perfect map i think burning paris is probably a better designed map but i think outpost is overall my personal favorite i just really enjoy playing this map this is an amazing map in my eyes so here's what my tier list looks like in the end. Hopefully I didn't miss any map. If you skipped over this just to get to this part, then you know, I get it. But yeah, this is just how I feel about every single map in Killing Floor 2. Overall, I would say this game had an issue with quantity over quality. Most of these maps aren't that great. Killing Floor 1 maps, I would say are a lot more better than Killing Floor 2 maps. There's very few good Killing Floor 2 maps. Really, it's S and A tier of the maps that I would consider really good on par with Killing Floor 1 maps, at least. But yeah, if you have a different opinion or if you disagree with any of my takes and you know feel free to discuss them in the comments below i do actually read the comments on all my videos so yeah i am pretty curious to see what people actually think about the maps in the game but yeah all i can really say in the end here is that i i hope that killing floor 3 actually has good maps like killing floor 1 does i hope it follows the approach of you know making more consistently good maps with higher quality and yeah that's just my opinion hopefully you enjoyed this and yeah i will see you next time